Hello fellow crafters, I'm Karen, and in this video I'll be showing you how to take some of your scrap yarn and turn it into a cute little caterpillar who can hold your utensils and napkins. If you're the kind of person who has lots of balls of yarn lying around from past projects, then this craft might be just the right one for you to use some of those up. For this we're going to be turning those balls of yarn into the body segments of a caterpillar, and we're going to be putting our caterpillar to work holding the napkins and utensils that you'd need for a picnic or a party. So for this craft you're going to need the materials and tools that are up on the screen. Our caterpillar is going to have six body segments, one that's the head, three that are single units to hold each of your three types of silverware, and then one that's a double to hold the napkins. So you're going to need six different colors of yarn for that. We'll need three jars to serve as the base for holding the utensils, so I'm going to be using some glass yogurt jars. The base of the napkin holder can be plastic or cardboard or anything sturdy that you have. And then the base of the head is going to be a styrofoam ball. We'll also need a few pieces to decorate the face and to hold everything together. While my jars are ready to go, I couldn't find a pre-made napkin holder that I liked for this project, so I'm going to have to make one out of cardboard. You could do this if you had a sturdy plastic or something like that, or a box that you could start with. I'm just going to be starting with a regular piece of cardboard, forming a small box that is roughly corresponding in size to the height of my jars so that my pieces look the right size. And I also have a napkin here just for sizing it to make sure that it will actually fit napkins at the end. So if you can't find a napkin holder that you'd like to start with, then I recommend you just make one and we'll just make a basic box out of the cardboard, glue it together, and then we can make the bases that will go underneath all of the pieces. My final product here isn't perfect as far as the napkin box goes. It's a little crooked in a couple of ways, but it does fit napkins, and I have this nice finished edge here on top, so I think it will do just fine, and it does stand approximately the same height as my jars. So I'm going to go on to the next step. Here are all five pieces of what will become our six-piece caterpillar. And while these are fairly stable on their own, with the exception of the styrofoam ball, they are going to need sort of a bottom edge to keep the yarn from falling off the bottom of the jar or the ball or whatever it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to be using some plastic packaging. This is just a lightweight plastic box. And basically what I'm going to do is cut circles for everything except the napkin holder. And they'll just be a little bit, maybe a quarter inch, to three-eighths of an inch larger than the bottom surface of each container and I'll kind of have to eyeball it on the styrofoam ball and that will be glued onto the bottom and that will keep hopefully the yarn from falling off the bottom edge. Now that I've got all my plastic pieces cut out, it's time to glue them to the bottoms of my other pieces. And I'm going to be using some E6000 glue for this. I considered using hot glue, but I'm a little concerned that it won't stick long term between the glass and the plastic. And I'm more confident that the E6000 will just hang on for dear life. 
So we're just going to put a little bit around this bottom most ring and try to center it on the plastic. We'll do the same basic process with the cardboard napkin holder. And then for the ball, I actually have a nail, just a roofing nail, so it's a straight piece with a wide head. And I'm going to put the nail into the ball and then glue to the nail head and the surrounding ball. It's going to be sort of the most complicated of all of them, but I'm hoping the nail head will give it a little bit more staying power, giving me a flat surface to glue to instead of the styrofoam. With the full curing time complete, these are holding nice and securely to the glass, to the cardboard, and to the styrofoam. The latter two of which I used both hot glue and the E6000. So with those all in place, we can move on to making the mouth. I decided not to complicate matters with the mouth, so all I'm going to do is sketch a happy little grin on this scrap of paperboard, and I'll cut it out and then just color it in with a black Sharpie. You could paint this if you wanted, but Sharpie's going to be faster. And I just have my styrofoam ball out to give me a little idea of the scale that it needs to be. One of the concerns that I have with wrapping yarn around glass jars is that the smooth edges will prevent the yarn from staying in place. So we added our plastic bottom lip, and my, my jars have a glass top lip, but I'm just going to be adding a little bit of a squiggle of hot glue around the top and bottom edges of these to help keep the yarn in place, to give it something to hang on to. And you'll want to remember that anything that you do on a clear glass jar is going to be visible from the inside, so try not to do anything too crazy. I've got all my pieces here now to assemble the head, so this is going to be a little experimental because I am not sure exactly how much yarn I need, so I started with the one that I have the least of because I think that the ball gives it a lot more of the basic structure and it will take less yarn. In addition to that, I have my googly eyes, and I haven't decided what size eyeballs I'm going to use. I think I'll probably decide once I have everything in place. But I did pick out a little blue pom-pom for the nose, and we have our mouth from earlier. I also have a pipe cleaner that I'm going to be using for the antennae. And then I still have my box of nails out here, which is just in case I feel like things aren't going to attach well, I can always glue a nail onto the back end of it and push it in to give it a little bit more security. So first things first is going to be to wrap the yarn around our styrofoam ball. <clears throat> and we want it to maintain, obviously, a round shape uh, as it is the head. But um, you'll just want to make sure that you secure your ends with some hot glue or some knots or both and uh, wind the yarn around in whatever way that you can make it stay. The challenge that we're going to have with the head is that normally when you wrap a ball of yarn you keep changing directions and the top of the head might be a little bit troublesome because we can't go around the bottom because it's got our plastic piece on it. So that may take a little experimenting, but uh, we'll figure it out. That went better than expected, and I would say the key to doing this is just making sure that you're doing really wide loops around the, the styrofoam ball. Don't try to do any small circles because they're not going to hold in place just sitting on top of it. You have to go around it. I also added a couple of dabs of hot glue along the way just to sort of secure things a little bit more. But it, is, it seems to be holding pretty well and I hot glued the end as well as tying it to some strings that happen to be right there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and attach the rest of the face pieces. I'm hoping it won't be too difficult to make the single body pieces. They're basically like the head, except we don't even have to worry about doing that top. So I think they might actually be the easiest. And the only goal that I really have is to make the, the body look more like a body. So a little more ball shaped, a little rounder at the, the middle, which means the yarn's gonna be thicker in the middle and taper off a little towards the top and towards the bottom. Now we embark on the final and most challenging part of this process, which is going to be turning this single box into what looks like two body segments that are right next to each other. So the first thing I want to do here is just round the corners of my plastic because they're a little bit sharp. So I'm going to do that real quick here. I'll let you know up front that this is the most challenging part of the process, which I can say looking back at it now. And I will try to explain it to you as we go here through the demonstration, but it did take me several attempts to get right, which I'm hoping to head off for you. Not only did my first method fail, but my first attempt on my second method, which is what I ended up going with, also failed. So I had to undo quite a bit of work, and you can see that starting here in the demonstration that my ball of yarn, my purple yarn, has the skewer bits attached already because they were done the first time and I didn't need to undo them despite having to undo a significant amount of other work. So to start off, you're going to want to cut your skewer to length, which is slightly shorter than the height of your box, and you will need four of those. These are going to be used to attach the two halves of the colored yarn, and they will also help the yarn uh, inside loops, for lack of a better way of putting it, to not collapse on themselves. So it's got a bit of a double purpose there, and you can attach it just by knotting your yarn around the edge, hot gluing it a little bit to secure it. And then you'll want to cut some cardboard. Now this was my second method. My first method I tried to avoid this, but it just was too challenging. So it is definitely worth cutting these. And the trick here, which was the reason my uh, attempt failed, was that even though I measured the outside of the box, and mine came to 17 inches, I couldn't just do an eight and a half inch uh, half, which is what math would give us. But I think that in stretching the yarn tight on the cardboard, when it sprung back to its normal um, size, it was shrinking on me essentially. So I ended up having to add about an inch and a quarter extra on either side. So if you're in roughly the same ballpark, I went from eight and a half inches to nine and three quarters inches for each piece of cardboard. And then the process is fairly simple from there. Um, so basically you're going to be wrapping that yarn around, again, keeping it fatter at the middle, a little tapered off to the sides, but don't stress too much about it because this one is the most finicky. We're gonna have to use a lot of hot glue later to secure it anyways. But once you get it all wound up, then you'll want to attach the other skewer end. So this gets a little bit more tricky. And all I managed to do was basically guess at the right point for it, for the yarn to end. I tied my skewer in place and then I kind of squee hot it underneath so that the skewer stays hidden. It's not the most graceful process, but it is a process. And once you have those skewers in place, then you can attach the first um, connection point. So I took a little bit of my excess yellow yarn and I basically tied one of the skewers from the yellow side to one of the skewers from the purple side. And I used two pieces of yarn to do this just so I'd have a little bit more control over it and so it'd be a little bit more stable. And with those two pieces tied together, then you can attach them to the box. Uh, so all I did basically was plop some hot glue onto the yarn 
and I had marked the center point of the box to make sure I got it in the right place. And I put the yarn down on it, held it in place to let it dry, and this is precisely how far I got the first time before I realized that my yarn wasn't long enough. So you may see on my cardboard box there that there's a little bit of the surface of it gone because I had to tear it all off. But if you're going smoothly, as I hope you are, then you can basically pick one side to work with, add a few hot glue points, and th this is just necessary to secure the yarn in place because we weren't able to put it tightly on in the first place. So we need that hot glue in there just to, to give it a, a, a base. So I did one point on either of the long sides and a point on the short side where I just had an extra line of glue that was holding the lower layers of the yarn in place. And then getting to the end of the first section, I prepared those connecting yarn pieces but didn't set it down just to make sure that I could kind of work with things once I got the other half caught up to that point. So from here you'll want to do the same thing with the other half, securing all of those points in the middle. And you don't want to worry too much about the yarn slipping around. It is going to move some. You want to try and get your yarn generally in the right place since you're gluing it and it's kind of stuck once it's there. Um, but you don't have to worry too much about the little stragglers because you can recover those later and glue them in place. So with that bit complete, you come to having to connect the last two ends. And this was a little bit more challenging because you kind of have to be quick with your hot glue. So I basically prepared my connecting yarns and then tried to hold on to those while putting some glue underneath at the edges. And uh, it, it worked okay, so it, it didn't look bad in the end. It was a little challenging to accomplish. But I got that glue down, added some glue in between the two colors of yarn just to make sure there was no gap in between the two. And then basically from there, after I was tying off the connecting yarn pieces, it's just tidying up. So you'll want to work along the lower edge, add some glue wherever you need glue to make sure that everything feels nice and secure. So I did it right up against my lower plastic base piece and then I worked around there, added some extra glue sort of underneath layers. You want to keep it hidden as much as possible. Um, but then once you've done the bottom, you can work around the top, just trying to get it tidy, trying to make sure you can't see the cardboard anywhere, um, adding little bits of glue if something didn't look right, also hiding the connecting yarn on the purple side because it's yellow and it sticks out. So the last thing that I then did was I noticed that my top edge of the cardboard was kind of visible and there's nothing wrong with that but I thought that it could look better if we had a little bit of extra yarn there. So I took some scraps of both colors of yarn, just started at the inside edge and laid a very careful precise border. This was the opportunity to be neat because there was nothing else impacting it. There was nothing in the way of making it neat. So I laid it around and then doubled back twice. So in total I laid sort of three extra layers of that yarn. And then I had a nice upper edge, just made sure that everything looked good. And then I had my double body segment. So here is that final product. You can see little bits. I mean, it can still be adjusted some if, if I want to. But um, for the most part, it is what I had imagined two colors side by side. Obviously it's not the same round shape that you get from one of the jars because we're working with a rectangle and not with a circle. But I think that everything is pretty secure. It feels like it's not going anywhere and the top is nice and neat. So I'm pleased with that outcome. So here you have all of the pieces side by side and of course you can mix up the colors and where things are. They could be spread out on your table, but you have all of the pieces and here's what it looks like with the silverware. Thanks for supporting Tickled Fancy Crafting by watching this video. This content is available on YouTube and Rumble, so click the like or rumble button to let me know that you enjoyed the content, and subscribe to see new Tickled Fancy Crafting videos in your feed. 
If you'd like to be informed directly about the content, ring the notification bell on YouTube or adjust your notification settings on Rumble. Comment with crafts that you would like to see in the future, and remember, you can make this.